Well, good evening and uh, happy Sabbath, even though it's not Sabbath for everyone. It's not Sabbath here, but uh, we can begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful uh, for the Sabbath that's uh, coming, at least for me, and um, the blessings of it. We're thankful for the study that we have on Friday evenings and for the things that you show us and teach us. And we invite your presence through thy spirit to speak to our hearts, to guide and direct our minds, to lead in this study. We know, Lord, how far we are from reflecting your character. Maybe we don't even know. We just ask, Lord, that you can use us, that you can change us and transform us, that you can fit us for the work that you have, prepared for us. Help us to submit to you in all things. We pray for this movement, for the fellowship that we have, for the light that you have given us. And we ask, Lord, that you can give us strength to walk in this light. We pray for those who have different needs, health needs, uh, physical needs, spiritual needs, um, emotional needs, and we pray, Lord, that um, we can direct them to you and that you can be there. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, good evening, everyone. And um, what, uh, what we're going to be doing this evening, it's, it's relating to some of the things that uh, showed up in our um, morning studies, but relate specifically to 2030. And again, it's a little bit more on Friday nights. It's going to be a bit more chronology. Um, this Sabbath, of course, we don't have a study on the Great Reset in the afternoon because it's the American Group's Sabbath and Daniel Fontenot is doing a study. Um, but we will next weekend. And So hopefully this, these chronological aspects, I mean, for me, they're interesting, but it's not just that they're interesting. I think these are uh, anchors that we need in order to understand the other information that we, we are looking at when it comes to what um, the UN, the globalists, what their plans are. And, and so I think that as we go deeper and deeper into this, uh, study over the next while, we'll start to see the significance of how we're even looking at 2030 in the first place. I know some people are still kind of, well, that's a date and it's in the future and are we predicting anything? Uh, but we have no idea what that date in the future means, even whether time would go on that long. We don't know. What we do know is that symbolically it speaks to us now. And that's, and that's what we're trying to do, is hear God's voice for us at this time in this movement and, and understand what this means. Now, this study here, this first part of this study, and I'm, I'm not quite sure how to, I'm just going to start here, because this is, in a sense, a review. That is, we know that we have 777 days, and these 777 days go from November 9th, 2019, to December 25th, 2021. And that, that period of time um, was, was connected to a period of time that dealt with November 9th, 1989, to December 25th, 1991. So you're going to see how that relates, because we're going to be looking at, at events in that history dealing with the New World Order, that is, uh, um, I guess it's what George H.W. Bush, George Bush Sr., um, um, who did these speeches in 1990 and 1991 that um, are, are important and they're connected to our lines in various ways. So, so we have to look at that. But here, the first thing that I want to look at has to do with Enoch Methuselah and um, Lamech. So one of the things which Stephen noted 
um, back in 2019 is that there was when Enoch is born, um, you know, he's well, he's going to be born like anybody would be, but he's going to be 65 years old uh, when Methuselah is born. And Methuselah's name means when he dies, it shall come. And so he dies in the year of the flood. And the 65 years is significant, um, you know, for a number of reasons. But one of them, uh, one of the reasons it's significant is that it's part of the 2520 prophetic mirror. And I remember when when I first started studying the prophetic mirror and I looked at this 65 years, I didn't like it because I didn't understand it. I thought, you know, wouldn't it have been much better if God had had 70 years, you know, beginning the 2520 structure instead of 65 years at the beginning? Um, um, and I didn't realize how interconnected these things would be. Now, one of the simple facts is that when you take our July 18 symbolic number, which is 187, and you add it to 65 years, you get 252, which is one tenth of a 2520. And that's not something that would have meant anything to us necessarily uh, back when I was first looking at the prophetic mirror in uh, 2012. So. So this became much more significant as we continue to have light unfold to this movement. So Enoch lives 65 years. He gets Methuselah. And then Methuselah, um, he's going to be um, 187 years when he begets Lamech. So we have that 65 and the 187 here. So we know from the time that uh, um, uh, that Enoch is born, right? So he's going to live 65 years. So from the time that he's born to the time that Lamech is born is going to be a period of 252 years. And then Lamech, of course, lives for 777 years. So the way that we dealt with this in our structure um, back in 2020 um which is when we really started looking at that in more detail. So I'm just going to share this here. <clears throat> so what you see here is a little bit of a mess, and I probably shouldn't have added all this mess to it, but uh, uh, we have it nonetheless. So I'd, I'd sent you a chart which was a little simpler. Maybe I should have just saved that chart. I didn't. I, I just started adding to it. but. If we look down in the bottom here, uh, the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see this here. Here is Enoch. Uh, he's born in 622 AM. And of course, that's very significant because we have 622 BC. Um, and that's going to be um, the Passover of Josiah. And then we're going to have 622 um, AD, right? So that's going to be a July 18th. On the Gregorian calendar in 622 um, AD, which is the start of the Islamic calendar. So we have these 622s. Of course, we know it's a symbol of June 22nd and it occurs in uh, Millerite history with Samuel Snow's letters and it, and it occurs in our history. And, and so it's, it's very involved. I'm not going to go through the whole study on 622, but just a note there. Um, and so you have this 252 years. Now, I'm drawing this from right to left. Now, the reason I'm drawing it from right to left is we had noticed, Stephen had noticed, uh, this 252 days from November 9th to July 18th. So you see in the top right corner. And, and so he had noticed that um, there was this division that you could divide it. Now, the date that divides it is May 14, 2020. Of that is that uh, May 14th is St. Corona's feast day or whatever it is. So St. Corona uh, just happens to be uh, this coronavirus. And, um, and this was going to be a meeting that was going to occur 
It had been planned for a while when the Pope was going to have all these world leaders and and rock stars and movie stars and all these important people uh, meeting there. Um, not sure where they were going to meet. I think it was at the Vatican. But this was going to occur on May, May 14th. And so we had noticed this 187 days and the 65 days. Now, what Stephen didn't really tell everyone is that that date was significant for him personally um, in that it's 18,720 days from when he was born. So, so this becomes significant, I believe, in understanding uh, the structure that we're in presently. So, you know, so Stephen's a little more modest than I am, right? I, I, I'll tell people about my personal things and put myself in these lines. Not that I intend to or want to, but I just am not as, as nervous about doing that. I think maybe I'm not saying Stephen's nervous, but... It's probably just more modest, you know, it's just like, it's just his own birthday. It's not important, but I do think it is important. I think uh, that we need to look at all this information that's being given to us and, and understand what it means. So, so anyway, we have these 18,720 uh, days now. And, and we can see then that if we take this structure here, um, that we already had a part of this structure and this structure had to do with the fact that 777 days before november 9th 2019 uh, on september 23rd 2017 we had a failed prophecy this is um the revelation 12 sign prophecy and you can look that up on the internet if you're not sure what it is anybody watching this and wondering what that's about but it was a failed prediction it was a evangelical protestant uh different types of groups um were predicting different things to happen on that date on september 23rd 2017 and november 9th 2019 is also a failed prediction as is july 18 2020 uh but the other significance is that on that date i was at lambert church um for the main for the main service um and i was uh, present, presenting July 18 as the prediction before midnight. So that it happened to be 777 days before November 9th, we would have to say cannot be a coincidence um, that we have this July 18 date being proclaimed. Now, we weren't saying July 18, 2020. It was just July 18 as a symbol of the prediction before midnight. That is, it's the July 18 letter the last letter of Samuel Snow's before midnight. And it's also, of course, the number of days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month, which is connected to the structure of Samuel Snow's letters. And we learned even more about that later on. But back in 2017, we can see this, this significance of this 777 days. Now, um, so there is this, um, I don't want to deal with all this so much. So we got Stephen Jameson's birthday. The one thing about um, this 18,720 days is it's 52 prophetic years. So, so on May 14th, 2020, um, that would have been 273 days before Stephen turns uh, turned 52. That is the difference between 52 prophetic years and 52 solar years is 273 days so so that becomes a significant uh part of the structure so um just to show you that we had first found this out that is um i had looked at december 21st 2012 and and the thing about this here is that this date december 21st 2012 is exactly center of two significant dates that Jeff had marked. That is June 22nd, that symbol of 622 that we talked about, June 22nd, 2011, to June 22nd, 2014. And the center date is December 21st, 2012. It's also a failed prediction um, dealing with the Mayan calendar, which that date is 1,872,000 days from the start of the Mayan calendar, right? So. 
So it has the symbol of July 18th in it, um, but also it's connected to the structure of FFA. And I had then decided to count 777 days from that date and came to February 6th, 2015, which is my 52nd birthday. So I'm born February 6, 1963. So the 18,720 days uh, divides this period of 777 days by May 9th, 2014. And May 9th, 2014 is April 26th on the Julian calendar. So it is a symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month, which is a symbol of July 18th. And it divides this 777 days just as we divide uh, the 777 days from November 9th um, to December 25th, right? So 2019 and 2021. So the, it's a lot of review here. Um, but Stephen and I both have this uh, 52 prophetic years. And we can see that this 52 prophetic years, what I noticed last night when I was working on this is that I could take these dates or these years and I could uh, count. So the, the first one that I did um, <clears throat> was actually <clears throat> April 5th, 2030. So this is the date that we're talking about symbolically uh, that we've arrived at a number of different ways. It's in the week of Christ study. It's in the, the mirror. Uh, that that deals with the 252 structures. Um, it shows up in the study of the covenants, and 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 we know that um, it it shows up in this period of time here, from April 5th, 2030 to April 19th, 1844. So if you go from the first day of the first month, or uh, to the first day of the first month in 2030, it's 187 years and 20 months. That's prophetic months, because obviously you can see it's 186 years, but it is 186 years. That is, the, you know, a cardinal count. So, so it's start of the 187th year, just like we have with the first day of the first month to the tenth day of the seventh month. So, so there's different ways we can look at that, and but it's also a period of 2,300 months. So it, it, there's just so many fascinating things about it. And, and those are lunar months, not prophetic months. Um, so when we look back over here, we can take this 5,200 years. It goes to Lamech's uh, birth that's going to start this 777 years. And we're going to see that Lamech dies five years before the flood. And um, five years is how many... Uh, prophetic days. What was the what was there uh, around? You had this. What what were you looking at there? Because you had like eighteen hundred, but I don't think that's correct. Uh, I thought it was eighteen hundred prophetic days. But the thing I had noticed was the relationship between one eight seven and five eight. Okay, and what's the relationship? Um, just like five cha five books of the Bible have 187 okay. chapters. Okay. Okay. So five books of the Bible, 180, that's what it is. Okay. And it's also 1800 days. Right. And then if you look here up at just above, uh, six months is how many days prophetic One eighty. One eighty, right? So, so it's it's kind of interesting. We see that symbol there as well. Whatever that means. Now, I haven't taken this and extended it in any way here, and maybe there's something that, that this relates to. I have no idea. From the flag, but I haven't taken this at the top and related it down to the bottom. It's this beginning part. So we have this structure and. So, um, but I can also go from Methuselah, 
from his birth and count uh, 5,200 years. So 5,200 years is 1,872,000 days, right? That is the Mayan calendar. When you go from the start of the Mayan calendar to December 21st, 2012, it's 5,200 years, prophetic years, right? So that's um, so that's where we have that number. So because 52 years is 18720 days, so 5,200 would just be 100 times that. But I just put it here as 5,200 years. It was easier than writing the days, and, and I wanted people to see that symbol of the 52 um, there as well. So maybe maybe I could have done it some other way. But um, so we can count from Methuselah, and that's going to bring us to April 19th, 1844. Now, when I'm doing this, uh, I'm counting different ways. So uh, the way that I have it written down here, I'll blow this up so people can see this. Okay, so here's just the kind of explanation. 5,200 prophetic years is 1,872,000 days. Lamech, his name, if we take the letters in English, 12 for you know L and 1 for A, etc. And you multiply them together, you get this number 18720. So this was a very interesting um, fact. I remember when I first heard about it, I was actually flying to Arkansas on November 7th, 2019, when I heard that being presented. Well, I've, I think I watched just a, a YouTube file I had saved on my computer. I downloaded and watched it. So it was pretty interesting. Stephen and Odilia had presented this. And then anyway, so I'm going to count from April 5th, uh, 3170 Gregorian. So if we were going to put this in a Julian date, it'd be 3171 BC, but they have it as 3170. That is the Gregorian calendar uses a zero year. But I'm just going to use the April 5th date because I'm going to go from April 5th, 2030. So I'm going to go all the way back here and I'm going to count that. But it's going to be 5,200 calendar years, right? So that's, that's, that's not prophetic years. It's going to be on the calendar years. I'm taking that span of time. And so I can look at it um, in this way, right? I can say, okay, that's... 5,200 calendar years. Now, if I counted the days, it's going to be more than if it's 5,200 prophetic years. Right? Because prophetic years are shorter by five and a quarter days, right? So, so I'm, not, I'm not counting the days here. But I put the years because if we count the years, we know it's 1,872,000 days, right? Prophetically, so I'm taking that. Um, right, so Iran's just clarifying that the December 21st date is the end of uh, that 5,200 Mayan years, right, which started on August 11th um, on the Gregorian calendar in 3113 BC. So that would be September 7th, 3114 BC on the Julian calendar. So that December 21st date is 5,200 prophetic years, because Mayan years are 360 as well as a prophetic year. So, so it's the same, same symbol, same number. Um, but then if I count um, from 1844, uh, well, you're going to see, a, since this is 187 years here, um, now it's counted a little bit differently. So if you count this on this side, this is actually 186 years, right? So it's, it's 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months, but it's 187 years, though it's the 187th year. So um, but I'm taking this symbol here at the beginning, and then I'm going to count uh, here from Methuselah, from his birth in, and we don't know the day he was born, so that's one of the things, but 687 a.m. So that's from the creation of the world. And uh, so the date is um, April 2nd. That's going to be. So I'm going to look at the last day of that year. 
So it's going to be April 2nd, uh, 3357 BC. So it'd be 3358 Julian. Um, so I'm just going to count from the last day because I'm counting just like I do with um, in 1844. We're counting uh, basically from the end of that to, to the beginning. So that's the idea. And to April 19th, 1844, so that's the first day of the first month, that's 5,200 biblical years. That is, I'm, I'm not using solar years. They're, they're slightly off by, you know, 12 days or whatever. So I'm just using biblical years there. Um, so I'm using different types of years. I'm using calendar years, which would be like Gregorian calendar years. I'm using prophetic years and also biblical years. So all three are being represented here. And then, um, so from April 19th, 1844 to April 5th, 2030, both being the first day of the first month, so that should bracket there. Um, the bracket there instead of a comma. Is 187 prophetic years in 20 months, which I've already said, right? That's just written there. So you can see that there's this structure that happens with the Old Testament connecting these events here as a symbol, as a type, to the 2030 date. But you can see that here, now we're going back to the past. So, so this one's looking forward from Enoch, Methuselah, and Lamech, looking forward, and it connects to this date that we have in the future, 2030. Um, but when we make the comparison, it's reaching back into the past, right? It's not going forward from these dates, it's going backwards. So what would be the significance of that? Why, why do we have something that goes backwards that shows us something about something that's going forwards? And just notice the arrows here, right? There's an arrow there, arrow head over here. So this one goes this way, right to left, this one goes left to right. But this one, if we go this way, we're looking back into the past, right? Because that's the future. Here, when we're looking at this one, um, we're, we're going to be going, looking into the future by going backwards, if that makes sense. <clears throat> okay, so the December 21st date, okay, that was already mentioned there. So, um, so what would be the significance that we have one line going back into the past, and the other line going into the future. What is that telling us? What principle is being exercised here? Well, we, know, we know it's a mirror. Okay, it's a mirror. Yeah. What's the principle? What, what principle are we seeing demonstrated? Probably the end from the well, I don't know. The end from the beginning. Yeah, the end from the beginning. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's one. And, and and the way the another way we can express it is that um, you know God shows us light from the past, and then that's going to reflect onto the events in the future. Right? Here's the end from the beginning, from eighteen times things that are not yet done. So so it's an important principle to understand. That is, we are not futurists as Seventh-day Adventists. We are historicists. When it comes to interpreting prophecy, I had to turn your mic off there, Jeff. It's pretty noisy. But if you do speak, you can turn it back on. Um, so we're historicists. That is a historicist interpretation of prophecy. That is, we look at prophecy as a continuum from the past to the future, and that the events in the past speak to the events in the future. Right. So when we read the book of Revelation, it's beginning in the time of Christ and it's going all the way to the second coming. All right, so we don't read Revelation as if it's just all about the future, which is what most, um, uh, most Christians would do if they're going to look at the book of Revelation at all. Is modern modern Adventism, Adventism does some, some degree now, too. 
Yeah, which has been around for quite a long time. There's sort of people will put the trumpets into the future, and um, so yeah. they some of our interpretation of prophecy. Now, um, so I'm going to move from this chart here. So I know um, there's lots of detail there, but I want to look at this. Now, this chart was constructed this week, and um, this was by looking at Pius the Sixth and Miller uh, Miller's birthday. So there was just something that I had noticed. Now you're going to see how this this all relates as I I pull this together. But uh, so there's a lot of detail here, and I did go through it um, uh, before. But there are some detail that uh, one one is you can see from Miller's birth. So Miller has a 18720 days also connected with with his birth, but it gives us a symbolic date of May 19th, 1833. So it brings us uh, to the year um, that the message is formalized, that the first angel's message is formalized. And um, it's also going to have a July 18th date in 1833, again symbolic. And he's going to be ordained as a Baptist minister on September 14th, 1833. So um, we don't have a 273 days going to his birthday um, in 1834, February 15th, 1834. And it's kind of interesting in the sense that because there is a there is no leap year in 1800. We have a rare situation that um, if you add 273 days, um, you're going to come to February 16th, 1834. So it's going to be one day after his birthday. That is, he's from when he's born to when his 52nd birthday happens. Normally, it would be 18,993 days. Because uh, 52 is divisible by 4, and so, you know, it's you have a leap year every four years. But in this case, 1800, they don't have a leap year. So his birthday ends up coming one day early, so to speak. It's just one little detail that's kind of probably confusing to a lot of people. But um, so, But the thing is, is February 16th an important symbolic date? So I didn't even put it on this chart, but I could have. Uh, Samuel Snow. Samuel Snow's first letter. His letter, right? yeah. Yep. Yeah. So when he wrote his first letter, and it's also uh, two sixteen is the symbol, and which is six times six times six. Now, <clears throat> so I'm not going to deal with all the other uh, events here. Uh, but what I will look at this is this date of September 11th, 1991. And and when I put this on here, I was uncertain. So I, I looked it up on the Internet. I typed in September 11th, 1991, and it says George Bush Sr. It's his New World Order speech uh, before a joint session of Congress, right? Um, but actually, that's the wrong date. It's September 11th, 1990. But I remember um, Tanya Beeman back in I'm trying to think when that was. It must have been in 2017 in the spring when I was watching the, the classes. And Tanya had brought up that, you know, there was these two September 11th speeches, one in 1990 and one in 1991. And um, but there isn't the one in 1991. It, it's just. People say 10 years before to the day, you know, George Bush gave this senior gave this speech, but it, it wasn't right. It was 1990. Uh, but you'll see the 1991 date is still because of the nature of the Internet keeps being perpetuated. So people keep repeating the same error. It shows up and you'll see videos dated September 11th, 1991. But they're, they're showing a speech from September 11th, 1990. Now, the symbol here is not necessarily one that everyone knows. 
but the Hebrew day is divided into 25,920 parts. Called Each part is called a helic. Together they're helikim. Um, so in each of those parts is three and a third seconds. So you would find if you multiplied this number, uh, you would get the number of seconds in a day. But they divide the day into these larger portions. They don't use minutes, and, and they don't use seconds. They use this thing that's neither of those. But um, and in 25,920 months, so this is 2,592. But if we had 25,920 months, this would be 765432 plus one days. Um, so this is the MOLAD interval, right? It's the it's the, the number used for calculating the length of the month. That is the month based upon the fact of dividing the day into 25,920 parts. A month is um, 765,432 plus one parts. So that's 29.530594 days in length. That's the the Jewish and Babylonian way of calculating how long a month is. And, and so they have this very convenient number. So I, I wrote a paper on it. But one-tenth of that um, would be 76543 days, right? And, you know, roughly it's not exact to the second or anything. And so I noticed from Miller's birthday, February 15th, 1782, that there's this period, and if I counted that many months, it brought me to September 11th, 1991. But it's not a correct date. Now, that is, it's going to be 12 months. Now, these, of course, are lunar months, but this is going to be 12 uh, calendar months um, uh, too long. So if I took from this number 2592 months, if I took 12 months off, what would I have? Two five nine two minus twelve. Twenty five eighty. Yeah, which is interesting. Just that there is this period um, from April twenty six, seventeen uh, seventy three. This is when Pope Pius uh, is made cardinal, so he'd be Cardinal whatever his last name is, Brashki. Um, April twenty six again a symbolic date, but an actual event, and then it's twenty five hundred and eighty days to the dark day. So I think it's kind of interesting that you get this symbol here of this 2580 and, and this as well. But, but we need to take note that the fact that there is this error. Now, this is, may seem a little bit odd, uh, but we're going to go to um, another share here. And let's see if I can find this. So. This shows up. No. Okay, just hang on a sec. There we go. Okay, so what you're looking at as soon as it shows up is um, uh, a book regarding Ellen White and some of her statements. So it's called A Critique of the Book. It's called the critique. I can't see it for some reason. Anyway, it's the critique on the book. It's there. It's a book that's critical of Ellen White, and they're critiquing this critique, I guess, of Ellen White. Um, but they're going to bring up this interesting uh, detail. Let's call it that. Um, and they're going to talk about the errors in Ellen White's writings. Now, now we know that there are things that um, that occur in Scripture that people will call contradictions. That is, you know, how many people were, um, how many, uh, when Jesus healed uh, the, the lunatic at the at the in the cemetery there, you know, was there one or was there two? And, and some people make a big deal about this, but 
I believe that these differences, what we call contradictions, or just the way that facts are presented in the Bible, are symbolic or purposeful in the sense that God has a symbol that we can understand from that. That is, he's giving us information, even in what we might call errors. Now, the errors exist because, you know, human beings are imperfect and language is imperfect. And so sometimes we can say thing in a, things in a way that isn't always clear uh, in how we communicate it. Doesn't mean it's it's a mistake necessarily. But there's also the thing, the aspect of human memory. So Ellen White gets some things wrong about her own life. But I believe that there's a reason for that not just so that we can see that she's a human being, but I think there is, is um, something that be, can be learned about things like people getting the wrong date for George Bush's speech. So even mistakes as such, you know, sort of in quotation marks, can be purposeful in God's order of things. Now, does anybody have a problem with that? You know, like, is there some? No. no. Okay. So, so, so that's good. I mean, but you know, why don't we have a problem with it? What is it that? What is it that we? Um, when when we look at the Bible, we're looking at things like the chapters and verses. When we're looking at um, even how something is translated, sometimes that God has allowed things to creep in, not, not because he's, he's not preserving his word, but because he wants to draw our attention to things. So here, here's a good example. Uh, when we look at um, Ezekiel, so maybe this isn't the best example, but it's a good one for me. Um, in Ezekiel, um, when we read about in Ezekiel 40, and they give the date um, at the beginning of the year in the first month. Well, it doesn't say in the first. It just says on the 10th day of the month, right? So it doesn't tell us. And, and we also have that in uh, earlier in Ezekiel when it deals with the first day of the fifth month. It doesn't tell us. And, and the question is, well, why wouldn't God just make it really clear? So why would he allow this sort of ambiguity uh, to exist in the scriptures? Because couldn't he have just had the prophets write it out really clearly so we could be very sure about, because he has all these other dates that are very precise. But we have two dates where they don't give us the month, they give us the day of the month. I was thinking of Peter's statement about Paul's writings. I was thinking about that. Okay, so there's some things hard to be understood that some people twist. So, so God allows room for doubt, right? So that's one thing. Okay. But doesn't it draw our attention to it and also dig a little further? I mean, just think of all of the different controversies within Christianity about interpretations of different texts that if – if, if, if the writer had just been a little clearer, we wouldn't have those controversies. And, and so, so we have to dig. And, and why is that important? Why is it important to dig? Okay, we know God held his mistake, hand over the mistake in the figures. We also have that 150 days in the flood that, you know, you have to dig through. But God's allowed these things. In, in some ways, we can even consider them like the enemies, as, as we're studying in the book of Judges, that are left to some degree. God is testing us. He's proving us. He's allowing us. He's giving us an opportunity 
um, to depend upon him in all the trials of life, and especially in understanding the scriptures. You know, he hasn't made it really easy for everything. Some things are very plain and straightforward that we don't have to even question. Of course, people do anyway, and that's one of the things, is even if God tried to make everything perfect in the scriptures, that is, so that it could not be um, misconstrued, it still would be, right? Because of man. So now there are er errors in Ellen White's writings, but it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, the ones that I want to look at, because I don't agree with everything that they say here. Um, and I had it here, and then I lost the place. Um, so, you know, Ellen White sometimes will say something happened 10 years or five years, you know, different spans of time, how long something happened, especially when she's talking about even things that happened in her own life. Um, and the one that I wanted to look at here, um, I don't see it here. I'm going to have to type this in, search this. Maybe I'm on the wrong page, but... Okay, here it is. Um, so these are events that um, her biographical information. So by turning to the Comprehensive Index, Volume 3, page 2950, it's almost 2952, but anyway, um, uh, the heading, Ellen L. White, Ellen G. White, biographical, it will be found that several times errors occurred in her statements of her experiences based on her memory. So she first heard Miller preach in 1840, not 1839. She heard Miller preach again in 1842, not 1841. Now, is this significant? So when Ellen White makes these little errors in memory and i've done the same thing when i you know was trying to figure out when something happened in my life um i was wrong right i mean i, I started looking at the details and uh um for instance i always thought that i was converted on uh august 18th 1980 but i i knew it was during the perseid meteor shower at the height of it i knew which day of the week it was and so I got it seven days wrong. Um, but back then I didn't have, um, uh, you know, access to the internet when I had first, you know, started remembering it. And so um, when I finally did, I found that it, w it wasn't August 18th, 1980. It was August 11th, 1980. So for a lot of years, I thought I'd kept August 18th as the date. So, um, and I guess that would have been the date I actually left uh, 100 Mile House. But anyway, um, so so we can sometimes remember things incorrectly. So she's going to get these things wrong. But, you know, some people would say, well, she's a prophet. But human memory is faulty. She's not being shown in vision, you know, when she was baptized. And, and it's probably in some ways not that important, you know, when you're just writing a letter to somebody or you're writing even – an account, you just you think, well, I think that was 1839, but you know it was 1840, so you're wrong. Well, it's not it's not a big deal. But one thing that we have here is that she was baptized June 26, 1842, at the age of 14, where she reports this as being as the age of 12. So is this significant? It, is a baptism date important as the symbol? My personally speaking, 
Okay. Personally. Okay. I'm talking about a symbol, um, you know, because we have some baptisms that are that are symbols, like we have uh, Clovis. Did we have the correct date for Clovis's baptism? Yes, yeah, uh, 508. Okay, 508 now. But originally, did we have the correct date? Um, no. Okay. Not originally, no. Yeah, so so I think that's that's significant that we have an incorrect date that then is later corrected. So do you think that maybe there's a symbolic significance in uh, you gonna have to turn off your mic, Jeff. Um I turned it off there for you. Um in that Ellen White gets her baptismal date wrong, her year. Is there some symbol there? Is the prophet symbolizing something, even in these mistakes? I would, I would think so. I would think she is. Yeah, I would think so too. Um, so now, um, and we have all these different. I'm just trying to find this here. Let's see if I can find this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Stephen removed. Oh, maybe he sent it to me personally. Okay. Um, so I'll share this here. So th this was from Stephen. He sent this to me on WhatsApp. And he looked at... Uh, Ellen White's baptism was Sunday, June 26, 1842. Um, and he's going to count the days to the midnight cry. So, I mean, somebody could say that's kind of arbitrary. I mean, the date lines up with something, I guess. But he lined it up with the midnight cry, August 15, 1844. And it's 781 days. So it's 781 days from the start date to the end date, but not including the end date, right? Or two years, one month, and 20 days. July 18th. Yeah, so we have the symbol for July 18th there, right? And, of course, we've already looked at that this can be um, 780 days, can be um, these different groups, seconds, and so forth, because um, 780 is um, is 18,720 hours. So this is one more day, so it's going to be um, 18,744 hours, right? It's 111 weeks, which is 777 days plus four days, right? So he, he just sent this to me, uh, but somebody else had sent it to me first. So I can't remember who uh, sent it to me first because there's too many people for me to keep track of. I can keep track of numbers, but not people. Um, but but the significance of this here, um, oops, I didn't want to do that. Uh, so the significance of this here is that um, we have this baptism and we have it connected to a, a major way mark in 1844. So this is something significant. And so we know that baptisms are significant. And we know that um, Ellen White gets the wrong year, but, but it's clarified when we need it to be clarified. Does that, that make sense to people? Yeah, yeah. If you're looking to clarify it, you got to show, show us. Right. So, so things show up as we dig and... And these mistakes are not major mistakes. I mean, it's not like a, a contradiction in God's word that's, that affects some doctrine or teaching. These are little details, and it takes us time to sort them out. Um, so this September 11th, 1991 is, an, is a mistake. But it's a mistake that we can see has significance 
Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, these statements, the New World Order speeches of George Bush Sr. And try to understand how this now relates. So this has sort of been a bit roundabout, you know, in this study, because we can see we have this 2030 date. But we can connect it to this structure. And this structure is the structure of the 777. But this is not the 777 that we normally think of. This is the one that occurred from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 1991. All right. So this is that structure. And in that structure, we have these um, speeches that George Bush Sr. made where he talks about the New World Order. Now, we all know the New World Order is connected to the globalism, right? It's not um, it's not just a, a little saying on the back of the $1 bill or on the, the Great Seal. It, it has significance. It's, it's used as a symbol by the globalists. And, and I think it was significant that we're going to have uh, George Bush Sr., a give a speech on September 11th, not 1991, but 1990. So 11 years before uh, the Twin Towers fall. Now, is 11 significant? Well, that's when the Twin tower, Towers fell on September 11th. Yeah, I know, but just 11 itself. The fact it's 11 years. That's... 11. Um, can't think of anything right now. Okay. Well, Joseph, Joseph, he has two dreams, right? To yeah. the Israelite traders. And then he's 11 years after he had been separated from his family, he interprets the dreams of the butler and the baker. Right. And then 11 years after that, he's going to be reunited with his family. So 22. So 11 is a half of 22. There's 11 generations to the flood. And then another 11 generations to them entering into Egypt. If we count just Jacob to Jacob's being the 22nd generation. Right. And then Jacob's going to divide the birthright then. So for the 23rd generation, it's not going to be going to the firstborn. It's going to be divided among his 12 sons, right? So we've, we've studied this in other studies. Um, so this 11 years has some kind of a significance. So if you counted from September 11th, uh, 11 years, you're going to come to uh, 2012, right? So whether that has some significance or not. So 2001 plus 11 is 2012, but that's gonna be the year in which that 777 structure again begins. So there might be some connection to that. But be that as it may, uh, we already have this symbol that we can look at um, connected to uh, Miller. And so we're not going to just dismiss this, even though it's it's the wrong date. That is Miller's that seven six five four three days um, connection. Um, so this is just things that he's going to say regarding um, the new world order, and I, I did have them all bolded, and then I changed the format, and they all dis disappeared. So clearly no longer can a dictator count on east-west confrontation to stymie concerted United Nations action against aggression. A new partnership of nations has begun. We stand today at a unique and extraordinary moment. The crisis in the Persian Gulf, as grave as it is, also offers a rare opportunity. Uh, have we had an opportunity that came up for globalists recently? Wasn't the pandemic seen as an opportunity? Yeah, definitely. 
them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so so definitely they look at this as an opportunity, the globalists do, uh, to move toward an historic period of cooperation. Uh, what does cooperation mean? What what's what is it a code word for? Did they want us to cooperate uh, with the vaccination? Oh, yes, yeah, Man mandates. Yeah, so so you have what you have is you have uh, cooperation is just uh, you know you could put coercion there. I mean it's not it's it's forced cooperation. That is, there's still pressures being put to cooperate. Um, out of, out of these troubled times, our fifth objection, objective, a new world order can emerge, a new era, free, era freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace, an era in which the nations of the world, east and west, north and south, can prosper and live in harmony. A hundred generations have searched for this elusive path to peace while a thousand wars raged across the span of human endeavor. Now, it's kind of interesting. I mean, he's talking about the directions of the compass, uh, east, west, north, south. Why does he give it in that order? Well, at the east, you got Islam, I guess. Islam in the east. Yeah. Well, so he's dealing with east west first. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is there prophetic significance in this? Uh, yes, it reminds us of the book of Daniel. Okay. Specifically, can you tell me what, what we should notice about this? Well, tidings out of the east and tidings out of the north shall, shall trouble them, shall trouble the papacy. Okay. Daniel 11, 40-something, 40 43, is it? I'm not sure. Okay. Now, see, I just think of this in contrast, because this is the globalists. This is their kingdom. This is their Tower of Babel. And in contrast with um, God's kingdom. So, um, and, and we see this in Daniel. So, so what else can we note? What about Revelation 7? Okay, so did you say Revelation 7? Yes. Okay, so what specifically in Revelation 7? The angel from east. Okay, so, so we have angel in the Bible east. different directions. Um, okay, so it's just, don't we normally say north, south, east, and west? I mean, that's what I've always said. Yeah, yeah it's normally what we say, yeah. But east, west, uh, north, and south is the language here, right? Yeah, it's kind of unusual you would say that like that. Now, Ellen White uses this terminology. Um, uh, that's the way she, she says it. Now, maybe it's just um, now she says it different ways at different times. Uh, let me see here. 
She says, um, this is one, Christmas is coming. It is, is the note that sounded throughout the world from east to west, from north to south. Now, of course, she's, ta- she's writing this thing here about December 25th and, and so forth. But isn't it kind of interesting that we're dealing with a structure that's going to end with December 25th, 2021? And that we have this baptism of Clovis, December 25th, and all these December 25th dates. Um, and that she's going to use it in this order. She uses different orders at different times. She uses north, south, east, and west, which is the normal way to do it. She uses that in some of her writings. That's actually the most common. Um, And let me see here. There's one I was... Um, Oh, this is the one I was thinking of. So we have already dealt with the falling of the stars, November 13th, 1833. And and when they quote this in, uh, when Ellen White quotes it, it says, never did rain fall much thicker than the meteors fell toward the earth, east, west, west, north, and south. It was the same. In a word, the whole heaven seemed in motion. Now, are what we doing here, taking the order of words in a speech by George Bush and comparing them uh, to statements in the Bible in the spirit of prophecy? Is this, is this proper way of studying? So, so I think the significance of the order of the words that George Bush Sr. uses um, shouldn't be ignored. So Iran says um, uh, he's going to quote, uh, this is from Zechariah 14.4, so that's a symbol for the 144,000. And his feet shall stand on that day, in that day, upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the mount of the olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove towards the north, and half of it towards the south. So here they're talking about their kingdom on earth, right, the globalists. Can we see that that, that kingdom is going to be destroyed and replaced by Christ's kingdom? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. So, yeah it, seems, it seems to line up with that. Now, so I ne- never actually did this study. You know, like I didn't look at this beforehand and figure this all out. Uh, but you can see how simply, when we when we study and we allow God to lead us, that He's going to reveal these things, and they fit with what we already understand. That is, I wouldn't create a doctrine based upon this, but. But we can already see, we already know what the globalists are about. This is something we already know. And then we can look at this information. So here we have uh, an often misdated speech. But its significance of the fact that it's misdated is not an accident. They shall come from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. Right. So that's um, in Luke 13.29. Um, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. So again, you have this symbol rep- representing a kingdom. But here in this speech, he puts them in this particular order, which isn't the common order, in my view, uh, that most peoples would, would say this. North, south, east, west is more common, not east, west, north, south. But that's the order he has them in. And... Uh, one of my favorite statements uh, is from uh, this one here is in Gospel Workers. But um, here, I'm just going to switch to this so you can see this. This is uh, it's just a nice statement. <clears throat> Would that every one of you could have a view 
that was presented to me years ago. In my very girlhood, the Lord saw fit to open before me the glories of heaven. I was in vision taken to heaven. And the angel said to me, look, I looked to the world as it was in dense darkness. The agony that came over me was indescribable as I saw this darkness. Again, the word came, look ye. And again, I looked intensely over the world and began to see jets of light like stars dotted all through the darkness. So remember the even this falling of the stars? They say northwest or east, west, north, and south in the account, right? Um, but this is just a vision, not of actual things. But jets of light like stars dotted all through the darkness. And then I saw another and another added light. And so all through this moral darkness, the star-like lights were increasing. And the angel said, these are they that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and are obeying the words of Christ. These are the light of the world. And if it were not for these lights, the judgment of God would immediately fall upon the transgressors of God's law. I saw then these little jets of light growing brighter, shining forth from the east, the west, from the north and the south, and lighting the whole world. Occasionally, one of these lights would begin to grow dim, and others would go out. And every time this occurred, there was sadness and weeping in heaven. And some of the lights would grow brighter and brighter. And their brightness was far reaching and many more lights were added to it then there was rejoicing in heaven i saw that the rays of light came directly from jesus to form these precious jets of light in the world so we can see the falling of stars as as a symbol can can be a negative thing in a sense you know the angels were cast out of heaven but here in this we have the same these contrast maybe is what we could put it of the world and it growing old and it being destroyed, whether it's, uh, you know, the Mount of Olives being split east, west, north, south, or we have the falling of the stars happening east, west, north, and south, but also God's kingdom is east, west, west north, and south. <clears throat> so I think it's interesting. Hopefully other people do. Yeah, I think it is. That's contrast between the Babel and God's kingdom. <laughs> yeah. So can clearly see that. Yeah, so the new world order is an era in which the nations of the world, east, west, north, and south, can prosper and live in harmony. But of course, this isn't God's harmony. This isn't God's order. This is man's order. A hundred generations have searched for this elusive path to peace while thousands of wars raged across the span of human endeavor. Today, that new world is struggling to be born, a world quite different from the one we've known, a world where the rule of law supplants the rule of the jungle. Now, what happened with 9-11? We moved from what? Common law to Roman law. But this type of law that they're speaking of here isn't really the type of law that we want to have. A world in which nations recognize the shared responsibility for freedom and justice. A world where the strong respect the rights of the weak. This is the vision that I shared with President Gorbachev in Helsinki. He and other leaders from Europe, the Gulf, and around the world understand that how we manage this crisis today could shape the future for generations to come. And of course, we can see in this language things that are portentous um, that sort of describe the world today. The test we face is great, and so are the stakes. This is the first assault on the new world that we seek, the first test of our metal. Had we not responded to this first provocation with clarity and purpose, if we do not continue to demonstrate our determination, it would be a signal to actual and potential despots around the world. Once again, Americans have stepped forward. At this very moment, they serve together with Arabs, Europeans, Asians, and Africans in defense of principle and the dream of a new world order. And of course, this is not the order, as I said, of God's order. Um, now, the date of that, of course, we see September 11th, and I, I, these dates are all, all here. September 19th, 1990 is going to be eight days later. 
Um, so fundraiser speech for Pete Wilson in San Francisco. Ours is a generation to finally see the emergence of promising, exciting new world order, which we've sought for generations. We are witness to the first demonstration of this new partnership for peace, a united world response to Iraq's aggressive ambition. And then there's um, some months later, so January 16th, 1991, it's an announcement of allied military action in the Persian Gulf. We have in this past year made great progress in ending the long era of conflict and Cold War. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, so it's basically the same statement, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, in order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. So this is globalism. And then this is his State of the Union address, January 29th, 1991. So I think this is the, uh, the one that actually sometimes gets misdated as September 11th, um, to be honest. Um, but, but um, you know, so they sometimes date the other one, but this is, this is another one. So January 29th. Um, what is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. The end of the Cold War has been a victory for all humanity. A year and a half ago in Germany, I said that our goal was a Europe whole and free. Tonight, Germany is united. Europe has become whole and free and America's leadership was instrumental. The world can, therefore, seize this opportunity to fulfill the long-held promise of a new world order, where brutality will go unrewarded and aggression will meet collective resistance. And then April 13th, 1991, you're going to have this uh, speech here. He says, I wanted to speak about the new world taking shape around us, about the prospects for a new world order now within our reach. The new world order really is a tool for addressing a new world of possibilities. A little bit of a pun there on his part. Now, I made this chart, and I didn't put these on a line, um, but we, we have these different uh, dates. So I put November 11th, 1989 here. And so the number of days from that date to itself is zero, right? Um, and then I have 9 11, 1990. So from the start of this period of 777 days, um, which is actually 777 inclusive, that is, it's 776, so this would actually be day one. You can see these number of days that being being counted. So 306, um, 314, right, all these different numbers. You can see the 520. So we already know 52 is a symbol of July 18, 2020. Um, so 520 is also a symbol of it. Um, and then from, this is from the speech itself, the eight days. And then the next one's 127 days from the first speech, but 11, nine days from the second speech. You can see that. And then 140 from from the first speech and 132 from the second and 13. So you can see these numbers, eight, number of the resurrection, 11, nine, symbol of 9-11, and then 13, a symbol of rebellion. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, then we have 74 days to the next speech and then 256, which is a uh, mathematically interesting number. And you can see the 330, 330 is 11, uh, 11 months. Uh, 343, we've seen that number before. 343 is what? The 
component of 777. Seven. 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. And uh, you can see here that's going to be from the January 16th, 1991 speech. So the first speech in 1991 to the last um, to the last day of that 777 days. So that means we can divide this period of 777 days, even though it says 433, remember this is an inclusive count. On these numbers, I probably could have just added this. So I could have put this as one. So I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna change this to seven. I'm gonna change this to 315, right? So you can see now, just because we have this inclusive count, that's why I would do this. I, I don't have to do that, so I could look at them as just a regular number. So I could do that, but I'm going to undo that, just make a note of it when I do this paper. But anyways, that makes sense that we can see that we have this structure in this in this speech that divides up the 777 chiasm as the 434 and the 343. Now, remember where that occurred in our 777 chiasm. People remember where that occurred. So we take our 777 days from November 9th to December 25th, and where did we put the, because remember we had divided it by 252. Okay, so Iran has it there, January 16th, 2021, and that's going to be the end of the 10 days of prayer, right? Remember they're going to have these 10 days of prayer uh, starting on January 6th. And ending January 16th, and that's going to be 187 days from the 100 days of prayer, right? That started on March 27th, 2020, to July 4th, 2020. So, so we had this structure, and so this 434 and the 343 is just another symbol of dividing this up. So in this case, it's going to be the same date, too, January 16th. But instead of being January 16th, 2021, it's going to be January 16th, 1991, right? Because that, that one's going to start on November 9th and end on December 25th, just as our 777 days does. Except ours is, is actually 777 cardinal days, but this is going to be 777 inclusive days ordinal days, 777th day is the day the Soviet Union falls, right? So I, I think this is pretty interesting what we can see here in this speech. So when we're dealing with this 2030 date, and we're dealing with all these symbols, can we see, if we can remember everything that we had just done, can we see that this is time the past to the future and that these speeches made um, you know at the beginning of, of our history of you know the time of the end these speeches made in that period of 777 days are significant but that we can tie them to uh, to Millerite history we can tie them to uh, the prophecies of the past I don't know if I did a good job of, of bringing all these symbols together because there's lots to remember. <clears throat> really good. But, you know, we're dealing with Lamech and we're dealing with the 187 years and the 65 years and the 252 years. And those are going to tie us to, so just to go back to remember where we started, these are going to tie us to Millerite history with these. 5,200 years, which in a, as a prophetic symbol is the number of July 18, 2020. And it's going to tie us to April 5th, 2030. 
So it's just another evidence for April 25th, 2030. But the main point that I'm trying to make here is it's not just about a date, chronology. We've also tied this together symbolically, right? That is, we can go to this New World Order speech. We can go to Miller. We can go to Pius VI. We can go to the time of the end there. And that time of the end is going to tie to our time of the end. We already understand that. But our time of the end is going to have this period of time that has 777 days attached to it. And that's going to bring us back to Lamech. And Lamech's going to bring us forward to April 5th, 2030. And, and this is how it works. God, as we pass over the ground of fulfilled prophecy, light will reflect back, back on past events. And those events, being lighted up, will shine light forward on our path. And I believe that this is what is happening in this movement. And the question is, are we going to follow this methodology? Are we going to follow what God has always shown us that's laid out in the spirit of prophecy very clearly and illustrated throughout the history of this movement and throughout the history of God's of God's sacred account through throughout recorded history? Is this going to be the method of study that we're going to use? So any questions on this or comments? Fairly straightforward. Okay. Well, I, I'm glad it is because it, it, it's straightforward to me. But, um, you know, and again, this is just another paper that has to be written. Um, I mean, we do have the diagram, but it needs a bit more explanation. But people can watch the video, I guess. Um, but as we keep getting this light, we can see that God is leading us. And, and we know, and we're, and we're not trying to be critical of others, but we know that in this movement, we're, we're, we're using some ways of coming to conclusions that ignoring all of the light. We can't ignore any of the light. And so we need to keep praying for our brothers and sisters in this movement that they take the time to study in this way. Because we keep getting light, and this light becomes extremely bright. But some aren't willing to look at the light. And why do people not like light? Why do they prefer darkness? When I was converted on August 11th, 1980, this was the thing that God showed me as I prayed to him, as I gave my heart to him, is that that scripture was what was shown me, that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And that's why I hadn't come to God before. I had knowledge of him, but I had tried to um, be a Christian without being converted. And... So there that evening as I prayed to God, gave my life to him. That, that's when I'm going to see those falling of the stars. I'm going to watch almost all night. Um, and, and not even aware of the significance, both of the symbol of the falling of the stars and how it ties to our history, but also the date August 11th and how that date would have significance for me later. And in my own personal memory, I got the wrong date. Ellen White had some wrong dates in her personal memory. Those aren't a reason to reject her as a prophet, though some would, because they want a prophet to be perfect. They're just looking for reasons to mm -hmm. reject. And I believe these mistakes, these things are allowed, and they're, they're not major mistakes, but they're things that are details that when we dig into them, uh, give us some understanding. We did this, remember, early writings, page 74. 
September 23rd, the Lord showed me. Well, we know it's October 23rd. That a typo occurred in the book. Well, it didn't start in early writings. It's actually started in the Review and Herald or the Present Truth in November of 1850. And that mistake carried on. It was significant because we understood it at a time that we needed to understand it, that the significance of October 23rd uh, was important, but also the date September 23rd became a symbol, a symbol that I had been using and recognizing, like September 23rd, 2017. And so, so this, this and, and, and just dealing with the September 23rd, which we, we did address when we studied early writing 74. But we know that the Jews had their Passover in 1844, both the Karaite and the rabbinic Jews, on September 23rd, 1844. But the correct date was October 23rd, 1844. And so the fact that Ellen White has this mistake in early writings regarding the date that she was given a vision um, I think is significant. And so, so God held his hand over a mistake in the figures because God is teaching us, he's directing us and guiding us. And so we can't get discouraged just because we don't understand everything fully. And just because, you know, there's things that we have to correct in our understanding. But the worst thing, what's worse than making a mistake that's not correcting a mistake once it's discovered or not even seeking to discover a mistake. And so we should be seeking in this movement uh, to prove all things and to hold fast that which is good, test everything. And when things, our understanding is incorrect, we need to correct it. In our lives, when God shows us something in, in our lives that needs to change, we have to change it. We have to cooperate with him because it's a prophetic work that he's doing in our lives. Okay, so thanks everyone. And uh, I really appreciate the study this evening. It's been a real blessing and encouragement to me. Thank you for presenting it. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Okay, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the Sabbath and the blessings of fellowship. We pray for the meeting tomorrow morning, uh, Dwight's presentation um, that has been bringing a conviction upon us. And we know that um, sometimes uh, many people are unwilling to look at some of these presentations. We know, Lord, that you will lead those who are seeking for truth. And that you will, um, we pray that you will guide Dwight again and this movement as we continue to dig into your word. Be with us throughout the Sabbath. May your Holy Spirit work upon our hearts. May the light shine and reveal things that we have hidden in the dark corners of our mind, of our soul. May we have the power of the Holy Spirit convicting us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment, that we may be purified and made white. Be with each person, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.